from Millville, New Jersey, and reaching around the world. New Life World Outreach Ministries presents His Word of Power with Pastor Richard F. Myers. Join us in a time of joyful worship, anointed ministry, and dynamic preaching from one of our Sunday morning worship services. It happens here on His Word of Power. Lift up your hands. It's about Jesus. I sing praises to your name. The name that's so much higher than all names. Yes, Lord. All honor. All honor to
has adorado entre nosotros tan deseado aquí y nada se comparará con la gloria de tu venir oh, oh, oh. yo no soy de aquí a mi casa volveré, Él me viene a buscar y con Él me iré. Yo no soy de aquí, a mi casa volveré, Él me viene a buscar y con Él me Si has esperado, Él me viene a buscar. Y es el Mesías esperado, Él me viene a El 
Mesías esperado, Él me viene a buscar. Oh, te adoramos, Señor, Tú eres digno, Dios, te adoramos, Dios. No importa lo que estemos pasando, Dios. I want to move this just a little bit over here, if you don't mind. It's part of my sermon. But before we start, we got to lower that down. Lower that down a little bit. Before we start, I don't want to get into this right now. I just need everybody to stand up for one second. I need everybody to stand up for one second. For a few seconds, just stand up, everybody. I want you guys to close your eyes. We're just... Just a minute. I feel a heaviness. I don't know why, but I feel a heaviness. And I want God to release. Because when we leave here, I want you guys to leave free. I want these burdens to fall off your shoulders. Whatever you may be going through in your life, whatever you're fighting through, whatever you're struggling with, I want to release it. I want you to place it in God's hands. And there's a reason why I just felt my spirit, there's a heaviness today. Many people are carrying a lot of loads, a lot of things, a lot of weariness. And that's not from God. God wants you to live in peace. He wants to let you, uh, um, excuse me, live in love. So this morning, I just want to lift up our hands this morning. And I want you guys to, let's pray. Father, we come to you, Lord. Father, we humbly come to you, Lord, asking, Father, Lord, that whatever we came in, Father, Lord Jesus, Father, whatever we came in today, Lord Jesus, Father, lift it off, off your people, Lord Jesus. Father, you say, your word says you will never leave us nor forsake us, Lord. But I sense a heaviness, Father, Lord Jesus, this morning. So, Father, I pray, Father, Lord, that they release it. every chain, Father, Lord, will be broken, Lord Jesus. Every chain will be broken right now, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, I sense your spirit right now in this house, Father, Lord, today, Lord Jesus. God, you are to something, Father, Lord, this morning, Father, Lord Jesus. Father, I declare the decree, Father, this to be gone in the name of Jesus right now, Father, Lord. So, Father, right now, Lord Jesus, I pray peace upon this house today, Lord. I pray peace, Father, for every family, Father, Lord, that have been struggling, Father, Lord. Their children crying out to their children, Father, Lord, the ones that are saved and unsaved, Father, Lord Jesus. God, you are a God of love, Father, Lord, peace. So, Father, this morning, Father, Lord, we place in your hands, Father, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen. 
You may be seated. If you guys can open up your word this morning, if you have your Bibles. And I want to thank my pastor to give me the honor to preach the word today. Last year, I had the honor in June. And when I preach, I always like to bring some kind of illustration. And you might ask why I have this table and chair, but we'll get to that later. But I want you to re- uh, open your Bibles to chapter, I'm mean, sorry, John chapter 15. And we're going to read. Can you hear me now? Okay. I want you to uh, open your a word to John chapter 15. And we're going to read from 9 to 17. And your word reads in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As a father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this, that my joy may be in you, my joy will be in you, and that your joy may be complete. My commands is love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you want my command. I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I've learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you. Listen, I did not choose you, excuse me, you did not choose me, but I chose you, and I pointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, and, and so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you this command, love each other. Praise God. Thank you for your word. This morning, I have a title. I titled this message, and the message that God gave me, your first love with Jesus. Your first love with Jesus. I brought this table, and I had asked earlier during the week, the pastor Matt, Uh, if I could have a table and two chairs. Give me a second. I'm going to dress this table up. I'm a waiter. You know what a waiter does? He serves, right? So we serve God's people. Praise God. You can make some noise. Well, we're a live church here, right? We love the Lord, right? Let me see if I get this right. Is it to the left, right, the fort? I used to be a waiter at one time. Actually, that's how I met my wife. I worked. I had a part-time job at TGI Fridays about 20 years ago. We're going to be going on 20 years married, right, honey, in September? be 20 years. The reason why... God led me to show this illustration. Many of us forgot our first love for Jesus. Many times we go through a lot of weariness in life. Sometimes we go through things, situations, circumstances. And a lot of times we lose that desire, that, that, that love that when we first came to God, we, things happen through the years that we serve him. And then darts come at us. But then we have a tendency sometimes where 
when we first come in, we want to do everything for God. We like on fire. We're, we're pastor, we'll do anything. What do you need me to do? I run here, run there. But as the challenges come through our lives, that's when are we walking in faith or are we walking by sight? And we got to get back to the roots of the relationship with God. What are our roots with the, our relationship with God? Prayer, right? Fasting. Listening to God. Being obedient. Trusting, believing. But a lot of times when these things come in our lives and these obstacles and situations when we face, we say, Lord, I ain't got time for you. At one point, you desired him. At one point, you made time out for him throughout your day. But then... We get busy. We tend to put God, God, I'll give you five minutes of my time, and we set them to the side. But see, what God wants is that, matter of fact, I'm going to use a couple for one second. Jeremiah and Brianna, come over here. I'm going to put you on the spot for if you're okay. With, I know you guys are a newly couple here. I want to bring you guys on the spot for a minute. Oh, you be the gentleman. There you go. Jeremiah, you sit there. Jeremiah. Sorry, bud. My bad. I fell the waiter into it. <laughs> Jeremiah, when you first met this lovely young lady, what were some of the things that you did or what, when you saw her from the first time, what are some of the things that you did to, to, to make time for her? Uh, I cleared up my schedule, number one. Uh, you got it? Go ahead. The bottom there. Go ahead. Uh, I made some schedule for her, number one. Uh, I cleared up my time, and I, I actually asked her, just take her on a date, you know? And, or her. she asked me, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it's not about me. I'm not, I'm not preaching here. But, uh, um, yeah, I made time. I made, uh, I made room. I cleared up space. You oh. know, I, I, uh, I put the busyness, the work aside, the world aside, and I said, you know, let me make time for you. So I just... Take, called her a lot? Called, oh, absolutely. Okay. Every day. Every Let me day. switch the mic now. What did you do when you first met this young, handsome young man there? Oh, I uh, asked him for his number. Um, and uh, we were intentional. Uh, we were intentional about our time together. We were intentional about what this was. We weren't playing. Um, I was not dating him to date him. I was dating him to marry him. So, Praise God. Now, this is the kind of relationship that God wants because God is a jealous God and God loves us. Thank you, guys, real quick. Thank you. Give him a plug. That relationship, that how they connected, is the same way God wants us to love him, spend time with him, talk to him, even when, if you're single or married, but if God was sitting across from me and I would say, God, how are you doing today? God, I need you, Lord. Lord, I'm going through my struggles Financially, emotionally, spiritually. Father, I need you in my life. 
I need you to guide me, Lord. I need you to give me the wisdom and understanding that I need to build a better relationship with you, Lord. A lot of times when we sit here, we always want to do a lot of talking a lot of times with our relationship with God. We never want to take back and just say, Lord, I'm here to listen to you. God wants us to listen to him. God is not going to lead you the wrong way, the wrong path. Getting back to your first love, the love that when you first accepted Christ as your Savior. Last week we had people, some of our church family and friends that got baptized. And I seen the joy when they ascended back up from the water and praising God and worshiping God. And I sensed that fire, that intimacy. And I remember when I got baptized, and I'm going to be honest with you because I'm very transparent, and I say this to our Rooted Family Ministry. There were times I questioned God in my faith. There were times that I felt, Lord, where are you in my life? I see others being blessed, Lord, but I'm being faithful to you, Lord. And I would get mad. I'm going to be honest. But same thing what God did in my life. That he said to me, son, don't ever let go of my hand. And I say to every one of you today is not to let go of God's hand. Because once you let go of God's hands, we're in trouble. That inti the intimacy of that relationship that we had with our Father will window. Our prayer life will lack. Let me go back to... And I thank you, Jeremiah and Brianna. I hope I didn't put you on the spot. The fire you had for Jesus when you first came to the Lord... Those things like prayer and reading your word, your uh, uh, fasting. Don't abandon your first love. Why is that that many you see the attacks come in our families, our Christian homes, husbands and wives are not in one agreement? And one of our mission statements for rooted family ministry, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Joe and Sue, y'all been serving how many years you've been serving with the Lord? How many years together? Almost 29 years. 29 years married? Almost 29. 29 years. Praise God. Yeah. Through those years that you guys have been together, did you face trials? Yes. <laughs> yes. Tribulations. Many, right? But you persevered through all those obstacles. And today, there are witness to be faithful here in this one church under pastor's leadership for 29 years. And that's, a, that's beautiful to see because many times when we're serving God, we have a tendency to backpedal. And God doesn't want us to backpedal. Don't let the devil get between your relationship with God. Because once he gets in between your relationship, see, the devil comes to rob, steal, and destroy. My brother Melvin, I'm going around. This brother here, he touched me when he came up to me. He gave me a hug. This brother here was an ex-gang member. And here he is today, serving the Lord and out in the street ministry, giving back, pouring back along with his girlfriend. Has God forsaken you? God has loved you. This guy had a conversation with him last week. And man, he called me for something else. But God reverted the conversation, what we talked about personally. And for you to be here, it touched my heart because I know what you've been through. But God loved you, and you're here today.
See, we know Job went through a lot. You know what he endured. You know the story of Job. This man was stripped from everything. This man was stripped from his family. He was stripped from everything he had. Many of us, if it's one thing, will probably end up blaming God and say, God, why are you doing this to me? And maybe just not want to serve him no more. But Job served him. He loved him. What he went through with his family, his children, his herds, got stripped away from him. But through it all, he stood faithful to him. He stood loving him. That's why we got to get back, folks, to, the, to getting back to that first love with, with Christ. And I'm not saying that you don't love the Lord. I'm not, I don't want you to think that, you know, I don't have a prayer life or I don't, I'm not worshiping him. But you want to have that desire to, to meet him, to spend time with him, talk to him, love him. He's listening to you. I know that God is a jealous God too. And he wants that time spent with him. That's why it's important to stay rooted in the things of the Lord. You know, a year, it's been a year and a half now that we started Rooted Family Ministry at the church. And I remember talking to Pastor Steve and at his house, and he asked me, Pastor Tito, what are some of the things that you want to do with our church family? And I sat down with my pastor. I said, you know, my vision for this church is to see our family love each other, grow from each other, interact with one another, participate with one another, enjoy each other's company, build each other up, grow in the, in the things of the Lord, right? Amen. This is, was the vision that I had with Root of Family Ministry. And I sat down with Pastor, and then when Pastor Steve interviewed, interviewed me, and it was a nice time at his house that we had. Forward now, a year and a half, I look at it. Can you say our family's growing here, church? Amen. Can you say that even through our rooted or even through pastor's gatherings that he has, even through the things that we do here at the church, you see the bond, you see the growth in, in, our, in our families. You know, this brother here, when I feel down, I extend my arm, he picks me up. He encourages me. Pastor John shared a few words. I'm honored, that, I'm honored by that, Pastor John, because you know what? I look at you like a big brother, Amen. and I look at him like family. Amen. Pastor Ron, Pastor Tony, our pastoral staff, Pastor Frank, Steve, along with our shepherd, our house, Pastor Bill. Pastor Bill can't forget, I, he's always so cool and sitting back. But I dearly love him. And it's important that we reach out to people that is going to allow us to grow in this walk, in this faith walk with the Lord. Brother John, I point out to you, Brother John, the bond that we have grown since rooted the men's ministry and everything, right? We've gotten closer along with his wife, Bill, Diane, many of you guys. Linda, I look at every one of this church family here, at how we have grown together in the things of the Lord. Rekindle your love with God. Don't let your heart not stay ignited. Keep your heart ignited for Jesus. Because once that fire, it's like when you try to pour water into trying to turn it off, understand if we're doing a bonfire, eventually you've got to turn it off. But... What I'm saying in the spiritual realm is keep your heart ignited for Jesus. Don't ever allow it to dwindle down. The Lord knows many times when we're walking and God has, you know, the enemy has a tendency of throwing darts at us when we're walking in his faith. 
But that's when we have to say, Lord, we lift up, we lift up our hands. We continue to walk by faith and not by sight. Because we know that we can do all things in Christ who strengthens us. And when we learn to trust in him, right, don't feel sorry for yourself. Persevere to keep going, to keep fighting. And those times that you know that, Father, I can't do it no more. When we just want to just give up. We just want to, I'm going to pretend I have a white towel, but I don't have a white towel on me, but we just want to surrender and throw the white towel in. See, this is when, when God knows that you're to the point where you're ready to break. That's when God's going to say, you know what? You stood faithful. And around the corner, here comes the blessing when you least expect it. The Lord says, ask, seek, and knock. Sometimes, we're, I'm going to be honest, we're hard-headed, and we want to walk through the door where we shouldn't be walking through. We want to get in and force ourselves to get into this door to say, Lord, I want to go through this door. This is what I want. I want this now. But God is telling you, be patient. Stop trying to rush things. But what would you want to do? Constantly every time, oh, Lord, I want this door. I want things fast and quick. And he's saying, son and daughter, be patient. Be patient. I got the right door. If you're looking for that right husband or that job or whatever it may be, when these two that came up, I know Brianna for years was waiting patiently until this young man came through this door. And look where they're at now. But that's what happens when we wait on the Lord. Today I have an honor to, to have my father in the house for the first time hearing me preach. I want to ask my dad. I want to ask my dad to come here for one second. Dad, come here. I want to share something very intimate because I'm, like I said, I'm... this man here, try not to get emotional. <laughs> He's pastor about over 40 years. <laughs> I gave this man a lot of gray hairs. You always say to Petito, hang with the right people. Do the right thing. Amen. I grew up in church, but there was a time I rebelled. And I fought this man a lot. I told my dad, stop praying for me. I don't want to hear your prayers. I used to tell him, leave me alone. I don't want to go to church no more. I fought him nail and tooth. But God had a purpose. He had a reason. And I'm standing here today because of the grace of God and this man along with my mother, even though she's not here. And this is the first time you hear me preach. You couldn't make it last time. But I thank him. And I'm going to say this. When I first stepped foot into New Life Church, he heard Pastor preach. And the word that Pastor preached that morning, that when we went home for lunch and we sat at that table, he said to me directly, looked at, between, looked at me and my wife. He says, this is the church you need to be planted because this is the church that you're going to grow. And 15 years later, I'm up here preaching. I'm up here serving our church. Thank you, Dad. Love you. You can have your... <laughs> Thank you. So 
So I'm here to encourage you that you don't have to look back at your future. I was that prodigal son that walked away, like I shared with you. I didn't know my purpose. I didn't know if I had value. And I never shared this. There was one time I sat in the car, even when I was younger in my teens, and I never shared this with my father and with my parents because I was very embarrassed. But I want to share it today right in front, of you, in front of my whole church here and those that are watching. I almost committed suicide. I had a lot of friends. Tito, everyone wanted to hang out with Tito. Everybody wanted to go and have a couple drinks. But I felt lonely. I felt pain. I sat in that car. My parents' house was right there. I started weeping and crying. Lord, I don't love myself no more. I want to take my life away. I didn't love myself anymore. I felt like I had no purpose, no value in life. But there was a voice. And there was a voice. Even though I departed my ways from the Lord, he, he told me he loved me. And I still have a lot for you, son. Even when I was disobedient. But God brought me back. I gave myself to the Lord. And I remember that morning at a, in Pleasantville, New Jersey, at a, at a black Baptist church, Pastor John. I gave myself to the Lord. They said I was the only Hispanic back there sitting in that back pew. But when that bishop came down, and he came from that altar. And you know they dress up in robes. But that day, Pastor John, he had a white robe. Amen. And that, that white robe, Amen. he looked like an angel. Amen. So when he sat and came up, and I was sitting in that back pew, every word that he had for that morning was from me, directed to me. Amen. When he walked, and I walked down, and I gave myself as he made the call, and I walked down the aisle. And as I wept all the way down the aisle, he had extended his arms out, and I'm not lying to you. And it was like an angel with his arms. And when he wrapped his arms around me, and he said one thing to me, the bishop, your home, son, your home, son. From that day, Right around, I met my wife. I got baptized. And I had that yearning fire to serve the Lord, my prayer life, to talk to God. On my way to work, that was my time to just to be with him in that moment. I had an hour drive at the time when I was working. And I said, Lord, I'm back home. What is it that you want to do? What is it that you want me to do for you, Lord? And I felt him saying, don't let go of my hand. Walk with me. I'm going to show you the way. And when the Lord brought me to new life, and I'm going to forward a little bit, not to make it long, but when God brought me into new life, I never started up here in these altars. Me and my wife served. I was in that parking lot with Wade. My wife helped out as we did the door as greeters. As greeters, we jumped on these cameras. We jumped from these cameras to do ushering. And then along, Pastor Matt put me to work in different areas. I came as a youth leader here when I was called to help as an assistant. 
And little by little, I was just growing. Many of you guys don't know, but when I sit there, I observe our pastor. I observe the way he preaches, the way he teaches. God gives this man a lot of wisdom. And I know he's a man of his word. Because the way I learn from him, if you look in here, he highlights a lot of his notes. And if you see here, I highlight a lot of my notes. Amen. And that's from learning, observing from the shepherd of the house. But I want to tell you today, not to lose your first love. Girls, don't lose your first love. Keep that fire for the Lord. Love him. Pray for him. I see the videos you put up on Facebook. You know what? You may not, people may not comment, but you're touching one life. You're making an impact if it's that one person. <laughs> See, you don't know the impact that everyone here can have in their spiritual walk with the Lord. You don't have to sit up in these altars. And if you're gifted to play instruments and sing, praise God. But you can make an impact in someone's life. And you don't have to beat somebody in the head with the Bible. Amen. You don't have to do just love. Yes. Smile. Brother Frank, you're a handsome brother. <laughs> Thank you. It makes a difference. You're validating. Pastors talks about this. You're validating someone. You're making someone feel loved. You're making someone feel special. And our, and, 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 and our job as leaders is to make others grow. Amen. Make others spiritually, when they're going through things in their lives and they just want to, like I said, throw in the white towel and surrender and say, Lord, I, I don't want this no more. But God has a reason and has a purpose and is getting back to that first love. That first love, when I, for instance, when I, like I said, met my wife, I used to talk to her a lot, call her a lot. We made time together. We sat across. Now today with technology and everything, our phones are taking away our times. And we all can be guilty of it, and I raise my hand. But I want to learn to continue to have that love for God. That fire stay ignited for him. Amen. That the joy of the Lord would never stop leaving me. I know this Christian walk is not an easy walk. I know this walk is never, you know, adversity, things come. The situations come in our life. But I applaud you that you make it here every Sunday. I applaud you that you come up to this river here and you want more and you surrender your, your broken hearts and your pain and your sufferings because the church is like a hospital, folks. The church is like a hospital. We come, we come maybe physically we're not, I mean, we're cut and everything we're going to, but emotionally, our emotional distress that we're going to. Right now, you see people with mental health People, I was just listening to the radio come to church. Young people are committing suicide. And that's the reason why I share this, because I was almost one, but thank God, God had grace over me. God has grace over one, each and every person here. This morning, I don't know what you're going through. And we have a few minutes. But I want to open this altar up. And I'm going to ask Pastor Steve if he can come in with the worship team. I just want you to bow your heads for a minute. I'm going to ask
going to ask you guys to bow your heads for a minute. And I want you to think about that first love, the first time that you encountered that per first personal relationship with Jesus Christ in your life. How you first wanted more and more of him. How you wanted, you desired him. And I want to invite those, if you feel free to, to come up to the altar. You don't have to be ashamed, because I'm standing along with you. I want that fire in myself to continue to ignite. That fire to keep going in my personal life, in my relationship with my church family, my families. I want to be an example to them, to my coworkers. As a leader here at the church, to be accountable for my actions, to be accountable to every one of here, every, every person sitting here in this church, I want to hold myself accountable. This morning, I just want to ask that whoever feels free to come up to the altar. And I just want to pray for you and ask God to kindle that fire back in you. If you lost that fire in yourself, if you feel like, Lord, if you just feel like, I just want to give up, if you feel like you just want to surrender, just come to the altar and just worship him. Leave it all here in the altar. Don't leave without whatever you're going through, through these four walls that you would leave, that God would answer these prayers. So this morning, I want you to come on up. Whoever feels free to come up this morning. I don't want you to leave. The service is not over yet. We still have time. But I'm asking if our church family could come up and let's just hold hands together. Let's give it to God this morning. So folks, come on up if you feel led. If God's touching your heart, you don't have to feel embarrassed. Just know that God wants to do something in your life this morning. Hi, this is Pastor Myers. I pray you enjoyed our broadcast today, and I wanted to let you know that our church family would love to have you join us here in our sanctuary for one of our weekly services. Every Sunday morning, we have dynamic worship, powerful preaching, an awesome children's church, and we see the power of God as he ministers to his family. Our Sunday services begin at 11 a.m. Then on Wednesday nights, we have ministries for the entire family. We have adult worship and Bible study. It's a night packed with the presence and power of God, and that happens at 7.15 every Wednesday night. For more information about New Life Church, you can go to our website at newlifeoutreach.org. There you'll find all the information you need to be part of our great church, and you'll see what God is doing in the lives of our families. Until our family meets your family on our next broadcast, may God richly bless you and yours. Who is New Life Church and what do we do? New Life Church is a multiracial, multicultural church in Millville, New Jersey. There is supernatural ministry at all our services. And today you could walk out of here with a much lighter load if God would just give you something. This morning I had, I had uh, a gift that God uh, had given someone and I didn't know who it was supposed to go to. In fact, there's no name on it or anything. And God said, don't worry, I'll show you. And today he showed us, here's a $150 gift certificate to ShopRite so you can go buy some food. Move it over, all over. You said for years you've been in pain. Come on, let's jump, dance, let's see what you can do. You can talk to right there, there it is. There it is, there it is, right there. Pain is going away. Just sit there because as you keep doing this, look, look what's happening there. How's the pain now? Yeah, what? You mean the pain's all gone? You don't need that. You don't need me either. You were just up here in agonizing pain. You were just up here with all those problems. And now, come on, walk with me. Come on, walk with me. Come on, walk with me. 
Turn around. That's amazing, isn't it? You're free. Come on back here. How's it feel now? Does it feel all good? Thank God he just healed you. New Life has works around the world through our partners and outreaches. The people want to accuse you. La gente te quiere acusar. People want to say things about La gente you. Te decir cosas de ti. People want to laugh at you. La gente se quiere reír de ti. And the only way you can stop them y hay una forma que tú les puedes parar. is show them the power of God in your life. Our mission outreaches reach around the world into 63 nations. From water well drilling to churches, Bible colleges, orphanages, elementary schools. New Life Church is constantly reaching around the world to share Jesus Christ. And New Life Church it there when disaster strikes. New Life staff also ministered at Ground Zero, Hurricanes Katrina, Sandy and Ima. We are helping with outreaches during the COVID pandemic. And our latest project, a leper hospital, clinic, home and church. I've been at uh, uh, New Life Church. This is our church. New Life Church is an ever-growing, ever-reaching ministry that touches the entire family. We offer activities for men, women, kids and teens. We have programs to help the needy, outreaches to the community, and ministry for every member of the family. We take mission trips, trips to Israel, and join with our ministry partners to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Church life at New Life is full of activities, outreaches, dramas, and various ministries to meet the needs of the entire family. Our concerts, dramas, shows, and special presentations reach our community with the message of hope. Thousands have come to these special presentations to be uplifted, encouraged, and hear the Word of God. New Life Church is truly a place of fellowship and family. It's a church where families flourish for all cultures, races, and backgrounds. New Life Church. The church of many colors. Why not come visit us? Perhaps even this Sunday.